What's up, Scooper? This is Erica Krupen with the Scoop Podcast. I'm super duper excited to be your host today. I have the pleasure of chatting with Kathy from Speedy Scoops. What's up, Kathy? What's up, Erica? Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, no, I'm really excited that you got to hop on. I know both of us have crazy busy schedules. You're a mom, I'm a stepmom, and we got the businesses going. So thank you for hopping on. Thank you so much. All right. So let's tell the audience a little bit, a little bit about yourself, a little 15, 30 second blurb about who Kathy is and how you got here. Yes. So um, I never grew up wanting to be a pooper scooper. This was not like a thing I had in my head. I didn't even know it existed. And I went to school for nursing. I did that for a long time before I had kids. I did massage therapy. I got licensed in that. And once we had kids, I was able to stop working and my husband works full time. And so it was just me and the kids and it worked out really nicely. And I would work part time here and there. And then once we had my second son, we have three boys, 10, six, and four. So once we had my second son, I was able to stay home from working as a nurse and just stay home with them and enjoy being a mom and and doing all of that. So going back to work was really never a thought in my head. And, um, even, you know, the continuing education hours for nursing, I kind of let that go. I, I accidentally let it expire. So I was thinking like, I'm just going to be a stay at home mom. I'm not going to, you know, do anything else, watch my kids grow up and, and that's it. But this turn of events happened a couple of years ago and it's, it's actually been quite a blessing and a huge blessing for our family. So I'm just so thankful just for this opportunity in this field of work, I guess. So it's a very cool niche how we started. So I really wanted to just share our story and I'm so thankful I can with you guys. Yeah, I'm excited. We're going to, we're going to get into it here in a second, but I feel like we have kind of similar stories. We're both from the medical field. Mm -hmm. I was a pharmacy technician and I did that for 14 years and working in the medical field is so different than running your own business and working outside. And I I as well, I never was dreaming, like, I cannot wait to grow up and be a professional pooper scooper, you know, but I love it. I absolutely love it. And I couldn't imagine doing anything different. I couldn't imagine going and clocking in at the hospital. 100%. And after doing this, like you said, the benefits outweigh the negatives, I feel. And being outside and it's quiet, I can listen to music, I can just, Listen it's to relaxing. Podcasts. Listen to podcasts, <laughs> listen to Erica, listen to all her knowledge, but it just, it is, it's very peaceful and it's not like a big deal to me. So when I, so when I'm starting to do it, I'm like, well, I've had kids, I've had pets, you know, I clean up everyone else. It's like not a thing for me. Like this does not seem gross and it's not a big deal to me. So it's, it's very relaxing. And I would, rather do this, than go back to working and be on someone else's schedule and not have to take off times and ask for permission. I'm like, "Eh, I could never go back. Yeah. How long, how long have you not worked in the medical field for how many years? So my second boy is six. So six years. So six years have been out. Um, and then three years ago, so July, 2020 is when when we started speedy scoop and that was the first time back into it. So almost now, have, you, have you been sick since you left the hospital? I noticed since I left the hospital and worked outside, I've barely been sick. Mm-hmm. I'm, I was sick all the time when I worked at that hospital, like every day of my life. Yeah. It's so true. Um, mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah. And I'm thinking, oh, in the winter, cause we are a year round service as well. And I'm thinking in the winter, I'm surely going to get sick. This is our third winter. And we have, I've never gotten sick during the no. winter time. And I'm like, this is so great. <laughs> I haven't been to the doctor at all, except for my tendonitis. I had to go, um, recently, like last week because my wrist and my elbow was hurting so bad. And oh. they're looking at my, my stuff. They're like, you haven't been here since 2019. I'm like, mm-hmm. I haven't been sick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like I have, I haven't needed you guys. Yeah. That's so, so I think great. It's something to do with the fresh air. It helps with the mental health, yes. being outside, all of the things. So, yes. All right. So you gave us a kind of a little bit of a rundown of your story. Can you tell us um, what's your business name and where are you located? 
Yes. So our business name is Speedy Scoop. We are in central Indiana. And my son, my oldest son, actually came up with the business name. He he started it. So this is kind of why we're in it. And he, you know, so July 2020, COVID, everyone is stuck at home and he's playing in his room and he's seven at the time. And he's like, hey, you know, looking out the window to our neighbor's house, you know, what is this? Like, what are they doing? And I said, you know, that's a business. They're helping clean up their yards and keep it clean. And he's like, I could totally do that. I said, 100% you can. And so right away, we didn't even stop. We didn't even think like, oh, he's too young. He can't do this. I see people constantly posting about, you know, their kids. Hey, you know, my son or my daughter, we are trying to earn some money for them. They want to um, rake leaves or shovel snow or mow lawns. And I'm all for it. I love that kids want to do that. It's very good for them too. So I'm always like, yes, like supporting them all the time. So it was never a thought to not have my seven-year-old be outside doing it. So, um, we would never leave him and drop him off at a house. So this, I was always constantly with him in every yard. And so, so did we, you help, did you help him scoop too? No. Oh, he did everything. He himself. did it all by himself. Yep. He so how did, did he learn? how did you guys figure that out? Yeah. So we watched, um, so we looked online just to see what we could find, like information we looked at. Um, so the company that came to scoop my neighbor's yard, we looked them up a little bit. And again, I had no idea this was a thing. Like th- this was a job, no clue. Yeah. Like and a so, real service. Yes. Like, like a real industry. service. 100% like, like anything, like a cleaning service, like a lawn service, like this was a thing people pay for. So the more we looked into the competition around us and just the different businesses, I was like, oh, there's like a handful right here. And so we looked on their website just to get some ideas. Then we looked on Facebook, we looked on YouTube and we found you, we love you so much. So literally I would be making dinner and I have you on the counter and I'm, you know, stirring the pasta and I'm trying to like listen and get ideas. And I'm like, okay. So my kids would constantly hear you and all of your knowledge and all of the things and inspiration. And they're like, what is she watching? I was like, this stuff is so good. So the more we learned from you, from Facebook, from YouTube videos, we got more excited. And my husband is very like business oriented. He went to business school. He has a bachelor's in it and all that. So he was very like dot the I's cross the T's make it, um, legit. It's not like slap a label on a Facebook page and you know, your kid is not professional looking. We really wanted it to be, you know, out of the gate, he looks professional. He's going to show up type of, you know, very responsible. So we had him in a very nice looking uniform, a polo shirt, khakis outside in the backyard. He had his rake and shovel. And I was like, take a quick picture. We're going to post it on Facebook, just in our neighborhood. And immediately he got so many people and I love it. And then I was shocked. And so I was like, okay, this is just our neighborhood. And I'm in a lot of different Facebook mom groups and community groups and county groups and, uh, small business groups. And I, I plastered it everywhere. I did probably 58 groups in that week. Oh goodness. He he was slammed. I was like, oh my gosh, business. He was so busy. So he, like I said, okay, I, I did not ever drop him off, but we posted it and we said, you know, here's my son's name, his age. He, you know, wants to save up money for Legos, whatever he wanted at the time. And people literally were like, I'll have him come over and I'll, have, and we posted our prices. We were very, um, transparent. We didn't try to lowball just cause he's young. I literally was $5 less than the neighbor, the professionals that came by as I'm like, I don't know how else to price him. So they even paid for that. They never tried to lowball him. And I was like, I'm so touched by the support that they were willing to have him come. So the more we, so he would school in the morning, afternoon, have lunch. We would go out for one, two hours and he got so busy within the first week and he hammered it for four months. What and how was he? People. He was just, he was there to do it. Cause I know with my yeah. kids, they would have done it for like a day or two. They would have been like, I'm over it, mom. I'm yeah. done. So how, oh, no. like, he no, loved so it. he did. And he, he, did. he um, I love, I love that. So were you doing we- just weeklies or were you doing one time cleans? Well, all, of it, of all of it, all of it, all of it from different websites, from, um, your 
your, your, your YouTube channel, just like the different varieties, like weekly, yeah. bi- uh, bi-weekly, monthly, one-time scoops. Um, we did everything out of the gate, like right away. We barely in the three years we've been in business, we've barely changed anything on the website. It's been consistent. Now is he, is he still scooping? No. So this is why okay. this is our story. So my son, so seven years old at the time. And again, kids are, our kids are doing jobs, raking, shoveling, whatever they're doing, the babysitting. So to me, I thought it was like, not a thing I'm with him. I'm not dropping him off anywhere. So again, I don't know who anonymously called on us. Someone did. And after four months, he scooped for four months and had 25 regular clients every week in that four months. And he was never stressed out. We did stagger it where he doesn't do so much. And, um, he wasn't, you know, and nothing was dirty. He was never touching it. We had the tools, the boots, we had the gloves, everything was sanitary. We had sprays, um, to clean the disinfectant wipes and everything and the sprays. So nothing was ever dirty. So, um, what happened was after four months, we got a call from our state in Indiana and they said, Oh, your son is seven years old. He can't be seen on the property. He can't be scooping. I said, are you serious? Like why all these other kids get to do all these things. And they're like, well, you're physically driving him. I was like, well, how else is he going to go and do this? Like, this is not illegal. And they said in Indiana, you have to be 14 to work. And I said, well, okay. But then what do you do about these other kids who are like baking cookies for dogs? Like all the things, you know? And I'm not against it, but she never had a good answer for me. So I was saying, okay, if we take him off of things, like we had him on a business card, a friend was so sweet to make a graphic for him free. And she made this logo for him and we put it on business cards and we put them on stuff. So we've already spent a couple, you know, a little bit of money already. So she's like, if you want to take over, that's fine. So my husband and I decided you know, with my son, you know, we know you can't be seen on the properties. Are you okay with, you know, mom and dad taking over and mom will say, I'm the owner. I'm we're the, we're the ones doing it. And he's like, yeah, that's fine. He is so bummed. Even till three years later, he's like, when can I go out? When can I do all these things? And I said, you got to still wait. Like it is such a bummer because at seven years old, he was so responsible. He had his little calendar. He had everyone like, Mrs. Jones at four o'clock, you know, one dog, like he was just so organized and to have that taken away from him, I was not having it. Like that lit a fire in my belly. And I was like, this is not okay. This opportunity being taken away from my kid who is learning entrepreneurial skills. He's learning organization communication by all these clients who they know he's seven years old. They're hiring him. He did a great job. And they loved having him on the property and they would talk to him while he's scooping. And then he would, you know, say, thank you so much. And they would, um, refer us to their other, you know, friends and family. And it was just such a beautiful time for him. He gained confidence. He was just, he loved it so much. And I was like, this is so cool for you to do after schooling. He did all his school, you know, like, but it was also sometimes during school hours after lunch, maybe one o'clock, two o'clock. And that can't be happening because people are still in school. And so they're like, you can't even be on school hours. So but isn't he homeschooled? So is, yeah. that's different, right? So as long as he gets all of his academics done and his yeah. grades are good, oh, like what I, are grades are excellent? Yeah. I was going to say, so are there's for people that do homeschool or don't like, I don't have, I don't homeschool my kids. So I don't know how it works. How does that work? So the schooling doesn't take them long it, and he's, he was younger at the time. So first grade, second grade. Um, so at the time he was done with school in one to two hours, it does not take long. So I'm like, man, he has all that time free. And that's why we were able to put so many clients together and say, yes, he's available between this time and this time, we'd be happy to come service your yard. And so what happened was at the end, you know, when the state called us and I said, okay, we're going to take over we'll have to take him off of everything. Like we had to get completely new cards done. We had to revamp the website. My husband had done the website for us first. And then we tried to make it more legit and more, um, streamlined. So we hired a professional to do the website, to get a CRM, 
We were doing it like pen and paper. We had our cell phone number. We were doing all individual text messages about when we're coming to clients' houses and it became a lot. Yeah. And I was like, surely this is not going to continue. This is like a summer thing, like not, you know, not a big deal. And no joke. We sent an email to all 25 clients and we said, you, we want you to know we're not trying to, you know, scam you. We're not trying to, you know, do anything weird, but our son was told he cannot be seen on any of the properties. We have decided that, you know, as the parents, we're going to take over as owners and we're going to do the one, be the one scooping and you're going to see us. They were like, this is ridiculous. That's crazy. Like I was expecting everyone to fall and drop and be like, okay, well, we were hiring a seven-year-old to help support him and we don't want to hire you. You know what I mean? So I, I was so shocked because they were like, absolutely not, please. We would love to have you still come. So we pulled my son out. I became the main scooper and it exploded bigger than we had ever imagined. And so by then, after we got to 40 people, I told my husband, I was like, we got to get a CRM. I cannot keep doing this. And we like took it on as like, this is a legit business now. Like we have a clientele that has not even dropped off. So as it has continued to grow, I'm so thankful that we were able to put a CRM and um, link it to our website. Everything became streamlined and so much easier. It was like a click of a button and it's life changing. It it. It's life changing. <laughs> so I was so thankful. So yeah. And it keeps going. I was like, this is like a thing. It is. And that's, that's a wild story. And I'm sure that was so, that was heartbreaking for you guys. It was heartbreaking yeah. for him. Now, was he able to do stuff behind the scenes to kind of still, um, yeah. So I'm so proud of him too. Um, again, after, so July, 2023 will be three years in. And to this day, he still is like, when can I come out to scoop or how many clients do we have? Or, um, we have cards, we have business cards in the car. And so like, we'll go to a park and he sees people with dogs and he's like, I'm just going to go grab a card and give it to them. Like I never prompted this for him. So I'm like, he has it in his blood, you know, to he's like, a hustler. he's a hustler. And I never did say like, you got to have so many clients per week and you got to get out there. This was all him. Like I have other kids. I have homeschooling to like, this is not on my mind to have my seven-year-old kid working. So he wanted to do it. And he wasn't working long hours, a couple at one to two hours in the beginning. So he was never stressed out. He literally did it. And it was a fun time for him. And the clients loved talking to him and he loved seeing the dogs and talking to them. So really the um, goal of just sharing our story is just like, if someone tells me no, or tells my kid, no, they can't do this. And they're losing the skills that he was gaining. It's like a big no for me. Like I he was gaining a massive amount of skills. Like mm -hmm. this is stuff that I didn't you can't even teach it. Thirties. Yes. No, no. You, I mean, you would spend that like thousands and thousands of dollars in school to learn the things that you learn as a business owner. Yep. So I was just so proud of him and to have that taken away. I was not having it. Like as a mom, that mama bear came out and I was like, I don't think so. Like if other kids can do other things, which they should, and that's fine. Why were we targeted and why couldn't he do something was not okay with me. So, and I'm forever thankful and grateful for all of our clients who we still have those same clients from the very beginning. And so I'm thankful and grateful for them. And then the ones who have continued to come on, um, who have added to the business and the clients. For some reason in my head, I'm picturing like him on his, like the day before his 14th birthday, he's like ready. It's like 1159 <laughs> and he's putting on a scoop, you know, oh, a scoop yes. uniform. And he's like, tomorrow I'm hitting it. I'm hitting those yards tomorrow. Heck yeah. Oh, I got a ready. truck for him already. He could get a brand new one if he wants. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love it. Well, that's, that's a wild story. He started this business. You were there to, you know, help him out and you guys were doing it like as a family and learning. And then all of a sudden that stopped. Right. And so then you were thrown into this. Yeah. 100%. How I had a one-year-old at the time. So I had to work around naps. I had my mom come babysit. I was like, how do I work around this? Because I did have two other kids that I was homeschooling and working around. So after a while, my husband was able to work from home. Thank God. And that's another huge reason we were able to expand and grow exponentially. 
because he was home. The kids were safe. I didn't have to worry about a babysitter, but the same thing, I literally was thrown into it. And I was like, I'm doing it for my kid. Like that's my inspiration. So whether he works behind the scenes with the CRM or he sees the emails coming in and if he wants to continue, it's here for him and the other boys, if they want to, if not, that's fine, but it's available for them. That's so good for him to learn the CRM. Uh, it's hard. It's hard to learn it's it. Hard. And I remember when I was trying to train one of my staff members on it, I'm like, I don't even know how to train you. Mm-hmm. I do. I do so much. And it was difficult. It was difficult for me to train. And the, the, um, the gentleman that was trying to learn, he's like, this is a lot. So the fact yeah. that your son's learning at such a, a, a young age, he's going to be just so much further ahead than the majority yeah. of people. God, yeah. I love that. I do so too. Good. I'm, I'm so proud of him. Um, because I surely thought like after a couple of years, he'll be onto something new or bored of this. And he's still asking and he's like, when can I get my speedy scoop sweater? And I was like, well, don't really wear that to school. Like it's not necessary. <laughs> you don't need to do that. But You're like, like, mama's I'm, not trying to get in trouble. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm like, well, let's not push it too much. I'm like, you can have like, it at home. You're like, I'm not built for jail. I can't. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> All right. So you're, you're, you're a business owner now. You weren't anticipating this. Mm -hmm. Were you, were you confident as a business owner when you first started? Um, I think so. Um, I, as a younger kid, I actually did start working. Like I was cleaning houses. I was walking dogs when I was really young, like not even 16. I think I might've been 11 or 12 when I started doing it. So that kind of was already in me. I, I liked working. And then when I was able to work, you know, at 16, I did that. And I think, to me, it was just a normal thing. And to me, it wasn't even a job, like even helping my son, we would go, we had no uniforms. We had nothing. We looked, we did not even look professional. We had the tools, we had all the things ready, but like we would show up in shorts and t-shirts, like it was summertime. And then once he was able to get off, I'm like, oh man, we need like a uniform. We need to look a little bit more professional. And so, um, that kind of helped probably boost the confidence and be like, okay, we're going to be forward facing as a legit company because we're competing with other companies around this area. And I didn't want to It was probably up. another company that called on you. I, I probably, I'm probably thinking so, but, um, but again, we did not do it to like harm another company. We solely did it because my son, like we are not trying to hurt anybody or business or whatever. So, um, it was, I, I don't even know what the rules are. If like you have like, certain sections of the city, like you can't cross this border and you can't be over here. Like, I don't know all the rules, but we didn't know they existed. So I'm like, I didn't have to sign like a non disclosure or non compete or anything. So we just started. I was like, I guess no one's no. telling on us. <laughs> you don't. Yeah. You don't. I mean, your territory is your ter- territory. It's, you know, it's not like you worked for another company and then you guys left mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden you started your own company. That would yeah. be where I'm um, not complete non-compete clause would come into play where it'd be like, Mm -hmm. you can't start a business or work in this area for one or two years or whatever it is. Right. And so we had no idea that it was even a thing and there were a lot of people. So that kind of came afterwards, but, um, but after finding that out, we wanted to have like the uniforms and I'm like, Hey, if we got everything else streamlined, let's look the part, let's do it. Right. For sure. So as you've been growing, you said that your business exploded, which is the best. What are some growing pains that you've been dealing with? Definitely going from pen and paper to CRM. That was tough. Um, to like you said, learning the whole, the whole thing and then having the app on the phone and uh, compared to like the computer and into like all of that was very interesting. Um, and trying to decide again, I still have kids. I homeschool and trying to work around their schedule. I still want to go field trips. I want to do all these things with them. And it's like, when do I scoop? Here's my days. Here's when I'm available. So it's scooping around all of that. And, um, It's been interesting. Like there have been times I've gone out, I've scooped, come back, do stuff for the kids, go back out and scoop again. Like the flexibility with this type of job is unreal. Like I'm so thankful because I'm hit. Everyone gets cleaned up. Everyone is completed on that day, but it's not like a specific time that I'm there. So I'm just like, I'm able to do both almost. So it's been a very cool experience. And I'm thinking if I had to work at a regular job, this could never be like, it would be much harder. So 
I'm like, I don't think I could ever go back. I was like, this is really nice. <laughs> no, I don't think I would have been able to get through my kitchen remodel if I needed to work a regular job because mm -hmm. I had contractors in and out of my house. So I was able to be out scooping, come home, touch base with the contractors and head back out. So yes. I, that's what I love about the scooping is the flexibility. And then with having the CRM and keeping you guys organized, yes, that is a huge player. And speaking of CRM, I well, KPS is sponsored by Jobber. Jobber is a CRM that we use to run, organize, manage all of our customers, do all of our invoicing and all of our routing. So if you're interested in checking Jabber out, click, click my link down in the description to get your 14 day free trial. I love Jabber. Awesome. <laughs> it is so nice to have those systems in place yeah. and it makes it so much smoother and go faster. And it's, it's very nice. Yeah. It, it lets you sleep at night because you're, yeah. it's, everything's organized. I remember before I had the CRM or any software, I'm like, did I respond back to that person? Did yeah. I enter? Did I, did I put them into my notebook? And then did I take them from the notebook and put them into the routing app? And then from mm -hmm. the routing app, did I create their invoice? Now all of it's done in one profile and it doesn't matter what CRM you use. Um, there's many, there's many CRMs out there. I specifically use Jobber because I love Jobber, but do your thing, try stuff yeah. out and see what's a good fit for you and a good fit for your business, but definitely check out Jobber. 100%. It's a good one. All right. So you stay organized. You got your CRM, you're, you're killing it. Your business is exploding. Um, what do you do to celebrate your wins when you hit milestones? I take baths. Lots of um, what are they called? The salt, the Epsom salts. Oh, yeah, yes. those are nice. Just um, relaxing, I like those. Do you yeah, like use relaxing. the lavender? The lavender scent. Yes. Oh, those are always. There. That's nice. I actually can't take baths right now because our oh. bathtub leaks. I got to redo my oh, bathroom. No. I know, and if if it were to leak, it will leak into my brand new kitchen. Oh no. So, it's like start one kids. project, do another one. <laughs> I know. I, I was actually going to sell this house in 2020 and we pulled out of it. We decided not to because we weren't sure where we wanted to move. Yes. I regret that decision oh, so no. much <laughs> because oh, this thing no. is a money pit. It's, you know, it's a decent area. It's a nice house. It's a big house. It fits all of us. So it's, it's okay. But I'm like, man, we could have sold and got the heck out of here. And I yeah. sunk all this money into it when the market was at the top. Mm -hmm. I know but it's, it's awesome to sell high, but then you have to buy high because you have to go. Back. Yeah. And it was like, where, where do we want to go? And we weren't decided on where we wanted to go, but I know that when we do purchase another house, I'm getting a lake house. That's a goal you of mine. You deserve it. Use, all your hard work. Poop, poop scoop and money to buy that lake house. I hope you get it. You deserve it. You've I'll helped use, so many. I seriously, I, I know I years ago, I would message you and I was like, you have changed our lives, like life changing events and things that we were able to do with our kids. I mean, my husband works full-time, makes excellent money, but still having the extra, not have to, you know, pay bills with all of his money and just do different vacations and everything like it has definitely helped. And so we were able to put my oldest into a private school. It's just not a stressful thing for us. Like he was ready, you know, we did homeschool him. He didn't know anything before that. So that was fine. And I'm like, he's ready. He was kind of like older. He's more independent. Like he was ready for that transition and he's been doing excellent. Like I'm so proud of him, but that burden of having the extra fees and, um, not having to, to just come from my husband's, um, work, you know, so just having the extra funds available, but that was all thanks to you and all thanks to your wisdom and all of the encouragement you kept giving. It was, it's priceless for our family. So I just, I am so appreciative of it. I'm, I, I want to cry, but I'm not going to do it. Um, thank you so much for telling me that. Cause there's mm -hmm. times, you know, when I'm doing social media and, you know, I have my own feelings, I have my own emotions, I get overwhelmed. And sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm so tired. Right. I don't know if I want to record today. And I, I do it. I put it out there. My, my videos don't get a ton of views. They don't, but they get views by the people that actually need them. And that mm -hmm. is what's important to me. Mm -hmm. And Hearing those stories keeps me going when I'm having my crappy days. So I appreciate you sharing that with me. Yeah, you're so welcome. Thank you so much. So like, um, we, we would not be here without you, without the knowledge that you kept sharing. Cause I know it, it can get scary, you know, sharing too much, sharing too little. What do you share? 
Um, but knowing that there's people that we could, you know, walk alongside each other and learn and grow and other people are doing it and you're inspiring other people. It's just, it's priceless. And I can't even thank you enough because eventually I'm not going to homeschool my kids. I'm like at a certain grade, I'm like, off you go. Like I can't do this anymore. But the fact that we can send all of them to private school and it's not a thing, like it's not stressful and just so thankful and extra vacations, different, different things we could take them to. It's just, it's so, it's like a weight off of our shoulders. No, it's good to have the extra money because it's very similar. Like my husband makes good money too. And when I was working at the hospital, I wasn't making a bunch of money. And now like I make better money. So it's agree. Yeah, same. Able, yeah. We're able to do more things. We have more flexibility. We're able to invest back into our house. So it's definitely, yeah. this business is a game changer and I'm happy. I'm happy. I started the YouTube channel. So at first when I told people, I'm like, I'm starting a poop scooping YouTube channel. They're like, one, you start a poop scooping business. You're crazy. Two, who's going to watch a, a poop scooping channel? And today, <laughs> yes. And today the channel hit 2000 subscribers. I saw that. I'm so proud of you. That's I amazing. Was, it's so cool. And so I'm, I'm happy that I, you know, I was brave enough to put it out there. Cause I remember I heard Brian Fullerton said, who wins when you succeed, mm-hmm. right? So it's like I was succeeding, I was doing my thing, and I decided to share it with people. And I know some folks might be like, oh, you're sharing too much. Don't share it to the competitors. I just felt I had such a tug on my heart to mm-hmm. share this because it changed my life. It pulled me out of a deep, uh, deep place. And there's just no way I could keep this to myself. So yeah, I'm that's how I feel fun. too. I really want to tell everyone, I'm like, you could do this. You could have more. And I know it's yeah. like, not, not like, everybody's going to do it. Cause no, it's like, no. it takes a special type of person to yeah. get excited about dog poop. Like we are special, we're a special I breed. <laughs> I know, but I know you feel like you want to share it with everyone and shout from the rooftops, but I know and people are like, shut up, quit talking like, about poop. Like, uh, we'll talk, I'll, I'll talk about poop at the most inappropriate times because I'm so <laughs> unfazed by it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And everybody's looking at me. I'm like, Oh, we are eating. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, we shouldn't talk about that. Yeah. I know oh, whatever. it just is natural. Just like your passion just overflows. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So when, you know, the, the good days aren't there, right. You're having a bad day. Our customer complains, you have issues with your vehicle. What do you do on those days to decompress? Yeah, that's happened once or twice. Um, I have to remind myself, like everyone is not perfect and you just have to power through and you make the best decision that you can. Like I think in the very beginning, when I did have to put my whole self into it, my son was out. I had scooped a yard and I think I was just like, I'm overwhelmed by all the news and all the things that we just got thrown into. And I might've missed one or two piles in this lady's yard. And she was still so kind, so sweet, but she was like, Hey, you know, I had left and I said, everything's all good. I'm going to go. Um, and she had texted me later and she's like, Hey, I saw a couple of piles, you know, just wanted to let you know, I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm going to be right there. And she was 30 minutes away. I would go anywhere. And I, she was 30 minutes away and she's like, no, no, don't worry about it. But like, I, in my gut, I was like, I can't have that. Like my reputation, the name, like, I don't want her to have a bad taste in her mouth from the company. Just like, oh, okay, well, I'll see you next week or nothing. Yeah, so same. I immediately went back and I cleaned it up and I apologized. And she's like, you did not even have to come. Cause she knew like the situation, how we had to transition everything. And, um, it's, she never left a bad review or anything, but in just knowing that I missed a couple things, you know, and I'm like, how did I overlook this? Like, I know it's not going to be perfect, but I'm like, I don't want that to be our reputation and just like, oh, I'll take care of it next week. You know? So that's just not my, my identity, I guess. Like I want to make things right and, and correct things that need to be corrected. Yeah. And I think that's what will make you stand out amongst the competitors or the other companies in the area, customer service. I mm-hmm. always say like anybody can scoop dog poop, you know, well, not if you're seven, but, um, <laughs> darn it. but I know darn, but the customer service, a lot of companies and a lot of people lack that just communication skills in general. So mm-hmm. the fact that you communicate well, you have the CRM and then you correct the issues when they happen, yeah. that's going to set you apart tremendously. I mean, 30 minutes to pick up two piles. I was like, I've done it. It's crazy to me, but I mean, I, like I said, I would do it because that's our reputation. That's our name. What do we want to be known for? Will she, you know, refer us later on? I, you don't want to have like, 
a company have a bad reputation. Yeah. And you going out there and doing it, you're not going to want to drive back out there again. So when you go Mm -hmm. back to that yard the next week, you're going to be a little extra cautious because you're like, I'm not driving back out here. (laughs) 100%. I'll be, I'll be spending a little bit more time, double, triple check in the yard. <laughs> yeah. I also, in my CRM, cause we have notes that come up with each job. If mm-hmm. there's a complaint, I put the, the, the date of the complaint, what the issue was. So when anybody scoops that yard, they see the complaint, it's fresh of mine. And mm-hmm. they're like, Oh, okay. This has been a problem area. So mm-hmm. all of us know, keep it together. That is so good. Yeah. It's good for me as the owner. Cause sometimes, you know, you get an autopilot sometimes and, and there's been times where I've scanned an entire yard and I'm like, I'm done. No, I don't even think I looked. And then I would have to restart and rescan because I was in my head for whatever reason, whatever was going on. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So, so what keeps you like, what keeps you motivated? What keeps you going? Is it your son? Um, for sure. My yeah. son. And, and like I said, like, I'm not going to ever force them and push them into this. If they ever want to, they can all three of them. Um, my littlest one who's four, he's like, when can I get my boots on? I'm like, Oh, I don't even want to go down that road. Like you got yeah. 10 more years. You got a long time. Um, but it's just cute. Like they, they support mom. They know I'm going out for a couple hours. I'll come back and they see both parents working and it's, you know, we're working together. We're, we're able to do both, you know, things with the kids, things with homeschooling field trips or outings at parks with friends and just the balance of it. So it's kind of cool. They get to see both. And, um, my, yeah, definitely my kids and my son is my motivation because he, his fire has not left. Like he still asks and he still wants to be very much involved in it. So I'm still going to continue it for him. And I, I do tell him that, um, the interesting thing is I feel like the older he gets, he, you know, for just different jobs, like I said, it's so hard to, you know, work, be your own boss and then go somewhere else because I see these jobs and they're posting, you know, such and such a job for 16 bucks an hour, 17 bucks an hour, whatever it is. Um, and that's fine, whatever they want to do. But I keep telling my son, like, this is what you could make if you worked at like a fast food place. This is what you can make scooping half the time and you can get more money. So just to have him look at the math and the numbers on that, mm-hmm. and he still keeps interested in it not like I'm trying to sway him more one or the other. I'm like, Hey, go out there and check it out when you're old enough and see what you like more. But I'm just like, here's the benefit of doing this compared to that. So if anything, if he were to get into like a a sales job, like to try that for a little bit from like a larger corporate company, then they could teach him sales tactics. Like that's what I wish. I wish I would have done a sales job for a little bit longer because then I would know how to set, you know, do the pitch, set it up and then close it. Yeah. That's, it's an art in itself. And it's I am not hard to, that either. Yeah. It's hard to learn. So if he were t- to try and go get a, a job eventually, maybe do something like that. Yeah. Push him towards that and then be like, all right, once you're done with that, then come back to your business and, and, you know, dominate the market. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And that is a skill that I don't have. Like I said, I'm, I, I went to school for nursing, a mom, I was doing a massage therapy for a while. So none of that business sense is in me, you know, it's all in my husband, but like, he's not always, you know, out there with the clients with me or, or sees someone walking their dog. I'm not brave to go up and be like, here's the pitch here. You know, like they'll see if they want to know anything, they see, you know, the magnets on the car, they see my uniform. So I don't ever want to be like forceful and push and start talking about it. Um, I figure if they really want the service, they could come ask me and they have, and that's fine, but I lack that. And I really want to get better at it too. Practice. I'm so shy. I'm so shy about it. <laughs> or just have your elevator pitch, you know, a little 15 second. And when people are like, Oh, what do you charge? What do you do? You just hit it. One dog, this price, two dog, this price, these are the you know base prices. And the price goes up from there. If yeah. you would like a customized quote, let me send you my link. That's what Perfect. I usually do. Cause I, I would end up chatting somebody's ear off and they're just staring at me like, Oh, oh okay. Bye. <laughs> yes. It's true. It's true. It is. Like you said, it's an art. It's, it's a cool, it's cool to watch when it's happening. It is. Um, that, so this question is, wasn't on your list, okay. but you have so much going on. You have to be a pro at time management. Can we, yeah. can we talk about that for a second? Because I have none. I'm flying by the no. seat of my pants. Yeah. No way. Yeah. You are a wife, you're a mom, you're homeschooling, you own a business. You have to give yourself some more credit. 
I have a paper calendar <laughs> that I literally have everything on and that's about it. Like I, I don't, I just have it all in my brain. I just, it keeps it straight and I just know. So, but you pay attention to your calendar. You look at yeah. it. Do you like live and die by your calendar? Oh, every day. Oh and yeah. And you don't lose the calendar. You don't misplace it. It is stuck to my fridge. So I see it every single day. And I'm like, this is what has to be done for that day. I don't go on my phone so much to look at calendars or, um, any electronic devices that have those apps. Like I, I get lost. Like if I don't see it, if it's not in front of me, it's out of sight, out of mind. So I'm like, I need to see the paper calendar and everything is written down. Yeah. And the phones are really distracting. I will get down the TikTok loop or whatever. And then I'm like, oh man, it's been 45 minutes. I could have definitely done something different. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's super distracting, but I know I live and die by my paper calendar. I'm old school. I am not tech savvy at all. So I tried it. I tried a Google calendar and like, I would get alerts pop up and I'm like, what does this mean? Am I late for this appointment? Like if I have it on a paper, I can see it and I can go and it's good. You know, sometimes you just got to keep it basic. What yes. is it? Or keep, keep, keep yes. it simple, stupid. Yep. That's a good, that's a good model. <laughs> it is a good one. So what's the, what is uh, your next step for business? So I know spring rush is considered really like a few in a few months, but oh, we yeah. have actually exploded this last month. We've tripled in one month and I'm shocked. And we are actually getting a huge snowstorm coming on Wednesday. So we might be off Same. like a week. So this might be um, a little pause, but January to the end of March has been super busy for us. And I'm like, is this early, early spring? Like, I don't even know what to call this a winter rush. I don't even know, but, um, I'm just so thankful that it has started this early and it just continues to go. We've gotten 10 people in one week and that never happens. So it's like the colder it gets the, the worse weather that it is. We have been getting so many emails and so many, um, people coming in and I'm just like, you wake up to people like mm-hmm. already signed up. And I'm like, this is so cool. I was like, when can we put them on a day? I don't know. So, but we, you know, we make it happen. We, they are all added and it, it's so wonderful. So yeah, it's all about that balance. My, my phone off to the left of me is like blowing up right now. I see oh. jobber. I'm like, Oh, I got some notifications. Who's coming on because this weather there's been wild. Yes. Um, I've probably picked up a good 15 customers too. And I'm like, Ooh. it's so amazing. Yeah. It's like, I know not everyone likes to do it in the weather and you're in the elements and it does stink. I don't always like to go out there either, but I'm like, I just got to power through these couple hours and I'm done. Like, yeah, that's all it is. And you just brave it. You just kind of suck it up and do it. Yeah. That's what you got to do, man. That's so good. You're such an inspiration. I, I love it. So if the listeners want to keep in touch with you and keep up to date where they can, where can they find you on social media? Yeah. So right now we have, um, speedyscoop.com is our website and we are also on Facebook. So just Facebook and on Google. (laughs) Gotta love the Facebook. I'll include your links down in the description. So thank you. You're welcome. Do you have any last words for our listeners? Um, I think just don't let anything stop you. Like if someone or something wants to get in your way and you're inspired and you have a goal and you want to go and do something, don't get bullied and stop what you really want to do. Don't say, Oh, I'm just so-and-so said I can't. So I'm not going to do it. Like you, I could never imagine in a short amount of time where our life would be now compared to like two years ago, could never imagine it. I could have been So, oh, I can't go and do this now. My son can't do it. We're going to just fold and just like squash the whole idea. And we would have been in a worse position. So if you have a goal, make it happen and just keep pushing and be, be better than you were the next day, be inspired, just keep going. And that's kind of also my message to my kids. Like don't get bullied for something that is, is totally fine. Like it's not illegal. You can do it. There's other kids doing it. (laughs) Like keep going. Yeah. Keep the head on your shoulders. Keep pushing forward. Man, that was fire. That was so, so good. I'm happy to end on that note. So thank you so much for tuning in and hanging out with us. You're welcome. And, And until next time. Bye. Bye.